strategy and innovation for me is uh, this way of, and I'll use a music uh, term since I've got one behind me here. I use this phrase synthesizing a lot. Um, so I do sound design in my spare time, which is really fascinating for me, which is essentially creating something that already exists. It's a sound wave, but making minor adjustments to create something really amazing and new. Um, and, and that's really how I view where I think restaurant innovation should be heading in my personal opinion, which is let's make what has already been an amazing thing for hundreds and hundreds of years or thousands of years, you could argue, which is feeding people and making those human connections. If you want to drastically improve your business, learn proven growth strategies, and generate sustained results for your organization, you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Innovation Junkies Podcast. Hey guys, Jeff Standridge here, and welcome to another episode of the Innovation Junkies Podcast. Uh, great to be with you all today. Uh, I'm riding it solo. Uh, on the hosting side today, uh, my my uh, my uh, co-host Jeff Amarine. Today we had to divide and conquer, so we had two obligations at the same time, and I got the uh, lucky option of being here with our guest today. Uh, our guest is Mr. Ben Pryor. He's the head of innovation for uh, restaurant and hospitalities for Spot On. Uh, he leads the development of Spot On's research and hospitality product innovation strategy with a focus on democratizing technology for hospitality businesses. Uh, ben is recognized for his ability to blend technology and people. Uh, he is the one who's driving the continuous evolution of Spot On's hospitality technology platform to address the rapping, rapidly changing needs of the industry. Ben, great to have you with us today. Thanks for being on the Innovation Junkies podcast. My pleasure, Jeff. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, if you've listened to many episodes of the podcast at all, you know that we like to start out. If if we, if we, both of us remember, you know, Jeff Amarine and I are kind of old, and so sometimes our memory fails us. But if we remember, uh, we like to have a random musing, something that doesn't have anything to do with the podcast per se. Although today our random musing we couldn't resist is going to be a little bit related. Uh, our random musing is what, it, what was your all-time favorite restaurant? Where was it? And what did you have as a meal there? So you're up first. Great question. Yeah, I'm actually uh, excited for this one. I think on a recent episode I listened to, you asked about favorite uh, movie-based technology that you wish you could have. Uh, that, yeah. that one was pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, restaurant's a really easy one for me um, because actually I grew up in Austin, Texas. Mm. And there's a restaurant there called La Fonda San Miguel. Uh, it's a family-run restaurant, uh, made famous actually by the great Julia Childs. I mm. uh, was friends with the original chef owner uh, many, many years ago. And it was my dad's favorite place for both pleasure and business dining. So as a young kid, I went there extraordinarily often and developed a pretty rapid love of uh, real authentic high-end Mexican cuisine from the Oaxaca region. And they do an amazing Sunday brunch buffet. They clear out the entire restaurant and have these huge ceramic bowls full of every kind of uh, beans, eggs, fruits, vegetables, <laughs> anything you, you could top. possibly imagine. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the most amazing Sunday Sunday brunch uh, ever created, in my opinion. That is that is fabulous. You've got my chops. Just <laughs> you know, can't can't keep them dry over here. Well, you know, interestingly, you, you mentioned Julia Child. Um, so uh, I am watching an HBO Max series. I believe it's HBO Max. I always get lost on which streaming service I'm watching something on. And I want to go back and watch another episode to have to go through all of them to figure out where it was. But I, I believe it's it's on HBO Max and it's called Julia. And it is a kind of a docu-series about her rise from a former diplomat's wife to someone who you know, really became uh, an icon in the in the food world. So kind of interesting. It's called Julia. I didn't mean to make a plug for that. Well, you know, um, if I were to talk about my favorite restaurant, where it was and what meal I had, 
it's generally the one that's in front of me at the moment. Because I, if you looked at me sideways, you would know that I haven't missed many meals and that uh, I like a lot of food. Um, but I will tell you probably the most opulent uh, meal I ever had, and, and I didn't think of it when, the, when, I was, when we were first kind of kicking around the random musing, but when you talked about brunch, it came to mind. Uh, we went to the Burj Al Arab in Dubai, and if you've seen pictures of Dubai, it's the big hotel that sits out on a little island in the Gulf, and it looks like a, a, a the sail of a ship. It's called the Burj Al Arab, and we went up to this brunch that was the most opulent and exquisite brunch I've ever had in my life, and and they even told me what it cost afterwards, and it was staggering. We, we were we were hosted there. Uh, by uh, a client. This was when I was working in Saudi Arabia and Dubai. And we, we sat there for five hours uh, grazing, uh, you know, off of the off of the cold bar and the seafood bar and then the egg bar. And then the, I mean, it was, it was amazing. Most amazing thing ever. Uh, so yeah, I'd have to say the Burj Al Arab. Uh, and then the second most favorite domestically, I didn't give you a chance to do your second most favorite, was in Greenwood, Mississippi, at the Alluvian Hotel, there's a little restaurant there called Giardini's. I believe that's what it's called. And I think I probably had the best steak I've ever had in my life. So Greenwood, Mississippi, Giardini's. Um, Got to check that out if you're ever in Greenwood. Don't know what you would be there for, but if you ever were, uh, you <laughs> need to try amazing. that. So, so Ben, let's talk a little bit about Spot On. So tell us about the company kind of at a high level and then what your role is there. We said the head of innovation and strategy for for hospitality and restaurant, but but tell us about the company and then tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, the company in its in its current form, which is uh, about three and a half years old, uh, is really a, a restaurant and retail technology company. Uh, when I say in its current form, it had been around for several years prior to that, uh, more focused on loyalty in the retail space. Uh, and they really wanted to expand their offerings to, to create a, a wider product suite for every type of small business. So not just retail, but also into the food service industry. Um, and so through a, a series of um, acquisitions of other companies, as well as building some of our own products, grew into what Spot On is today. Uh, most recent acquisition was actually a company that uh, has been really big in sports and entertainment. So if you ever go to a, a college football game, an NFL game, Major League Baseball, uh, you're potentially transacting with our technology in there as well. Uh, so that's why, you know, you mentioned the phrase democratizing technology. Um, we do service really large enterprise clients, most of the big sports teams, you know, uh, but also service every type of small business uh, across America as well, both in restaurants and in retail. Uh, that can look like a, a point of sale terminal that I think everybody listening has probably interacted with swipe your credit card at the coffee shop uh, kind of a deal, uh, all the way up to, like I said, a belly up concession at a sports arena. Um, we do food trucks, we do auto repair places, um, every type of small business you can imagine. Uh, and then we also are, are in kind of mid-sized restaurant, like regional chains as well, because uh, we do have a, a restaurant-centric product team that's really focused on that segment of the industry also. But we still do loyalty, online ordering, uh, kind of all the things that, that you would want to interact with uh, a small business or a restaurant. Uh, we do provide that at a, a really reasonable price for a small business owner. Got it, got it. So talk a little bit about your role there as the head of innovation and strategy. What what does what the day in the life of, of Ben Pryor look like? Yeah, for a little context, I actually uh, led technology for a spot on client for several years. So I used the technology, chose to purchase it uh, on behalf of a pizza chain uh, that I was with in the Midwest here. And uh, as a client really enjoyed the relationship I had with spot on, uh, really realized there was a, a, an extreme empathy that that company had for small and medium sized businesses. I uh, believe so much in the organization that I ended up joining them full time last fall uh, and really created this role uh, to help kind of amplify that uh, that small business and restaurant empathy uh, because I had been on the other side my entire career. So I spent 30 years in restaurant training, development, operations, uh, technology, et cetera, kind of done pretty much every job there is to do within the restaurant business over my career. and. Uh, 
now that I'm on the other side uh, working for a technology company, it's really important for me to solve actual real world problems that restaurants have, uh, not just create a better mousetrap that everybody else uh, has been doing over the last 30 years uh, based on how restaurants used to operate. You know, the last two or three years have been a, a dramatic shift in every industry. I think maybe restaurants uh, have been the most dramatic uh, because most of them are forced to close down their dining rooms over the last two or three years uh, for certain periods of time. And, uh, you know, out of most industries, they probably had to have the most rapid innovation, whether they liked it or not. Uh, we are where we are now. Um, so really trying to make sure that we don't lose the hospitality and, and the real personal connection. And, and I, I really appreciate your musing at the beginning, because I think that goes back to, you know, the, the real emotional connection that people have with food and restaurants. And it's generally around a, an experience around family, friends, a big event. Um, and it's really important for me that technology doesn't eliminate that passion and love for restaurants. It should amplify what uh, our industry has been amazing at for the last 30, 40 years. So I'm going to diverge just a little bit because I see your background there and, and the, um, the a couple of musical instruments looks like. And, uh, and so you actually have a degree yes. in music or, or studied music in, in college, correct? Yeah, I, I had this dream to be a band director and uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, showing my age here was really inspired by Mr. Holland's opus. I had an amazing, that, I don't know if you remember that movie, I had an amazing um, music career in high school. We actually won the Grand National Championships at the Bands of America competition uh, when I was in high school and wanted to take over the world and inspire young people to, to love music. I uh, worked in restaurants and hotels while I was going to college, did my student teaching and had this really adult moment of, uh, oh my goodness, I, I don't really want to do this as a job for the rest of my life. Um, but I want to take that passion for really inspiring and educating young people, which I was doing as a leader within the restaurants and hotels I worked in, uh, really kind of flipped that on its head and, and, you know, have music just as a pure passion. So uh, I'm still a partner in a music studio here, and that's actually where I office out of. Um, I, I do a lot of, uh, piano, keyboard, organ work for a variety of artists, um, do some studio session work. So I actually still get to do something I really love, but then, uh, you know, the education piece, I, I grew up through the restaurant industry, utilizing that skill uh, by developing teams on the operations side of the house. Yeah, I'm probably going to get chastised for going way off script here, but that's <laughs> all right. So, so your band instrument was what? Uh, jazz piano was my primary and then French horn as well. Okay. Yeah, so so I actually was a uh, was an all-state euphonium baritone player, uh, played in a military band for the better part of 20 years, uh, went to college as a music major on full scholarship until they realized I wasn't particularly talented. Uh, and so if you were to see, you know, a, a depiction of my musical career behind me, it would be two instruments, a baritone and a trombone. Uh, well, I take that back and a third instrument. I taught myself to play one song on a ukulele for my daughter's uh, uh, rehearsal dinner, right? Um, so it's good use of ukulele for sale. It's only played one song. It's just played it 4,000 times. Um, and, and so they, they figured out I wasn't particularly talented, so I couldn't be a music major. So I have this theory that there is a direct correlation between uh, music, musically inclined people, music majors, and people who are successful in the technologies strategy, innovation, uh, uh, computer programming, database administration, what have you. And so we don't have to dig into that. Maybe that'll be a topic for another another day. So so tell us, if you will, what's the if you were to identify the top three business problems that spot on uh, solves for its clients, uh, tell, what would that be? Yeah, as I mentioned, you know, our primary focus is small and medium sized businesses. And throughout my career, I've actually worked for some of the largest enterprise brands in the restaurant space uh, that are national or actually global brands. Uh, and I have uh, opened my own small restaurant uh, with some friends many years ago and kind of everything in between. And my, my last organization that I mentioned where I was a spot on client. Uh, we had 25 full service restaurants across five states. So it's kind of right in that nice sweet spot of uh, a really nice size business, but we weren't having to worry about our locations in Dubai or, uh, or China or overseas. So, uh, you know, I've experienced every level of that. 
And I would say to summarize kind of where spot on sits, we really want to figure out how do we provide uh, what these large enterprises have by throwing bodies at, at an issue. So they'll have an entire supply chain team in-house or a 45 person technology team uh, fully in-house of these larger enterprise restaurant brands, even mid-market brands like the one that I ran uh, and especially small businesses do not have that luxury. And so they end up just making decisions a lot of times based on price um, because it, it's what fits into their business model. And they don't really think long-term strategically about how are we growing our business? How can technology be an aid? Uh, it's viewed more as just this unfortunate expense, I think, by most operators. Um, and you know, at Spot On, I think we're really trying to figure out how do we make it fiscally responsible to lean into some really quality technology and not try to sell somebody everything under the sun that they may or may not need for their business. So we really focus on flexibility um, because as I mentioned at the outset, we service food trucks, we service uh, the local Mexican restaurant down on the corner by your neighborhood, um, you know, the, the Chinese carry out restaurants, we've got everything in between. Uh, and all those concepts don't necessarily need the exact same technology. So we try to be as flexible as possible and let people pick and choose um, kind of in an a la carte manner of what makes sense for their business. Got it. So let's talk about how you, you go about uh, innovating in this, in this space. So, so how, first of all, maybe before that, what do you see as the intersection between strategy and innovation or innovation and strategy? Let's start there. And then I want to talk a little bit about how you, how you go about innovating and executing strategy, developing and execution, executing strategy within spot on. Yeah. It actually kind of goes back to the the questions you asked about my music career. It's really interesting. I would not consider myself a really bleeding edge innovator in the sense of like, I'm going to invent something. I think a lot of people hear innovation and they think invention or somebody that just wakes up one morning and says, Hey, I just dreamed up this new way of doing things. You know, there's a lot of famous examples out there in, especially in technology um, that, that get wrapped in this innovation bubble. So strategy and innovation for me is, uh, this way of, and I'll use a music, uh, term since I've got one behind me here, I use this phrase synthesizing a lot. Um, so I do sound design in my spare time, which is really fascinating for me, which is essentially creating something that already exists. It's a sound wave, but making minor adjustments to create something really amazing and new. Um, and, and that's really how I view where I think restaurant innovation should be heading, in my personal opinion, which is let's make what has already been an amazing thing for hundreds and hundreds of years or thousands of years, you could argue, which is feeding people and making those human connections. Um, how do we make that even better and easier for the people that work within those restaurants? And so when I think about innovation, it's very much incremental and thinking about things from a real human centric place. Um, a lot of the innovations that uh, a lot of your audience has probably heard about recently is around robotics. So the, there have been a lot of stories recently about some of these larger chains leaning into cooking robots or hosting or serving robots. And it's funny because having spent 30 years in the restaurant industry, I really think about Hey, what's the list of a hundred things that I really hated doing in all those jobs I've had over the years in restaurants and greeting people at the front door, cooking food and serving them food uh, are not anywhere near that top 100 things I hated doing. <laughs> but yet that, that's where a lot of the innovation tends to be happening within the restaurant space because it gets a lot of PR and attention and financing. Uh, it, and it's really interesting. So I, I take a very different approach and think about Innovation from a strategy perspective to me means as a restaurant, what do I want my customers and my team to really feel uh, about working here or dining here and, and thinking strategically, how do I get from where I am today to that place while still making a decent amount of money? Because uh, nobody went into the restaurant business to get stinking rich. <laughs> they did it because there's some other reason that's a family tradition there's family recipes. It's a real emotional connection. Um, it, it's something other than making a really ridiculous amount of money. Um, and so I, I think 
if we start from a place of how do we make the team member and customer experience that much better? What's my strategy to get me from point A, B, and C? And then innovation can look different depending on what type of restaurant or service style or food it is. Uh, and, and I think that's what gives me a little bit of a unique perspective. I'm definitely not anti-robot, uh, but I, uh, I, I lean way more on the, the idea of, I know because I was one of those people, why people love working and opening restaurants. And I want to make that an, a better experience, not eliminate some things that already make that a great experience by robotics or automation or some of these other uh, strategies, I guess you would call it. So you talked about how the front, the front office or the front of house, if you will, and the, the back of house uh, in terms of cooking and preparing food and serving food is where a lot of the, the financing, a lot of the innovation occurs. In, in your experience, what do you think is one of the coolest innovations you've seen in the restaurant or hospitality space? And what was it? I would say the thing that's the most interesting is probably something that most restaurants don't have today, uh, but something I'm really interested in, which is around supply chain. So I think many of us over the last couple of years have had uh, probably more exposure to supply chain than we ever realized we would in our lifetime. Uh, we heard about how things got from this country to this country, how they're all sitting out in the ocean, and why can't I just have that show up at my doorstep in a cardboard box instantly? Uh, and that's never been more true than in food. Um, so there's a lot of technology uh, kind of intersecting with food and growing food that I think is really fascinating. So going back to the democratizing technology conversation, uh, these large enterprises have entire teams that are really focused on supply chain intelligence and traceability of food. And now with blockchain and some other technologies, there's actually a lot of really interesting things happening around purchasing um, fresh food, uh, disease-free food, uh, some things that aren't necessarily in the, like the genetic modification bucket, but more in, I can now understand as a small business, a chef run operator, uh, of a single restaurant. When I go to buy this case of lettuce, I can actually watch where it's picked and I can see where it stops along the way before it gets to me. So there's a lot of visibility happening for small businesses that were never available before. Um, so then they, they can be authentic about where the food is coming from and really understand that. Yeah, I've heard of even traceable products in terms of coffee beans and fair, fair practices trade, trading of coffee and being able to trace from a cup all the way back to where it came from and which farmer and what have you, which is fascinating to me. You know, I also know that, and, and we've talked a little bit on the edges of this democratizing access to technology. One of the very first uh, venture investments I ever made was in a company that said, you know, all of these restaurant chains and franchises have access to all of this great profitability dashboarding that does plate costing and food costing and labor costing and, and allows you to break down every day and look at how the, how the, the, the dollar gets spent across a, uh, across a restaurant operation. But single mom and pop operations don't have access or even small chains don't have access to that kind of technology. That would have been in 2015. Has that changed considerably since then? Uh, yes and no. Um, so using a spot on example, we've got a really powerful reporting suite that is included within the technology package that we sell. Um, so it, at a really basic level, that that amount of reporting data uh, is fantastic and is great for small business. The challenge, which I think you're speaking to, is the, the data is available. Most small business operators don't know what to do with it. Um, so there, there's definitely innovation happening. Spot on is participating in some of that uh, and, and general trends within the industry around taking a lot of data and making it actionable for a small business operator. So saying, hey, I would recommend you not send this buy one, get one free meat pizza to this person that is a loyalty customer of yours that you know is a vegetarian. So that's that's one example where small business is now getting a little more marketing and loyalty intelligence and more recommendations versus just these business intelligence platforms that are highly flexible, uh, that are really built for a CFO that wants to sit there and, and you know lean on their data analysts to create custom reports. 
that vision, I think, was sold to restaurants in in that time frame. You're talking about 2015. BI tools and dashboards were all the rage. A bunch of small business operators signed up for these things, and they're not sustainable because they don't have a team of people uh, making all the inventory adjustments on a daily basis or purchasing, um, you know, substitution adjustments in these platforms. And so it's bad data in, bad data out. So uh, spot on is really taking the approach of trying to make those as simple as possible and surface really simple recommendations of, Hey, do you realize that a massive storm is coming and maybe you shouldn't schedule these six extra people tomorrow because of that. <laughs> so things as simple as that, that a, an enterprise would kind of laugh at. Um, that's really, I think, where small business can make up significant amounts of margin uh, just by having a little bit of forecasting intelligence surfaced for them in a really simple way. Gotcha. We're talking with Ben Pryor. He's the head of innovation and strategy for restaurant and hospitality at Spot On. Ben, if any of our listeners want to make contact with you or Spot On, where can they find you? Yes, I'm very active on LinkedIn. You can uh, search me there. Uh, okay. Spoton.com is our URL. Uh, we actually, speaking of the margin deal, we actually just uh, released a, a small business margin calculator okay. uh, at spoton.com slash points with an S of profit. Uh, and you can enter actually your own data in there if you want to understand how employing different technologies can impact your bottom line. Uh, and really pull back some margin. So I would encourage any any small business operators that are listening to check that out. Uh, it's completely free to use. You don't have to sign up for anything um, it, and really understand if, if I add this one piece of tech, could I potentially not have to schedule one more person on a Friday night? And, uh, and that would equal X amount of bottom line profit for me as a business owner. So definitely encourage you to check it out. Very good. Thanks again, uh, Ben. We appreciate you for being with us. Uh, you can find Ben at Spot On at spoton.com, or you can find him on LinkedIn, and that is uh, Ben Pryor, P R Y O R. Ben, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Same, Jeff. Thank you. This has been another episode of the Innovation Junkies podcast. Thank you for joining. Feedback from listeners like you helps us create outstanding content. So if you like this episode, be sure to rate us or leave a review. Also, don't forget to subscribe to get the latest growth and innovation strategies. Thanks for tuning in to the Innovation Junkies podcast.